we're going to cat out net O2. And wow, this playbook's looking a little bit more complex than maybe the ones we've seen in previous videos. Uh, let's start at the top, work our way down. That's the way Ansible reads this stuff. It's the way we're going to read it too. Uh, we start off with, okay, it's a YAML file. We see we've named our play here. It's called Arista Config Saver. Hosts all that references everything up in our host file. Gather facts false. Now this is interesting. Gather facts is built into Ansible. Ansible is expecting to run against server stuff. This network stuff was a bit of an afterthought, guys. It was Ansible was created to push state to servers. And we said, well, can't we make it work with all the vendor stuff we have out there too? And the answer is yes. But Ansible thinks because it expects to go to a server, it should run by default a module called setup. Setup assumes Python is going to be in the target system. So there's a handful of scenarios when working with Ansible, you're not going to have Python on a target system. And certainly, going to a you know, network device, you're not going to have L2, L3 while on Python on it. So we need to set gather facts false here. It's going to blow up in our face. The variables I have set here, Ansible connection, network OS, become, uh, become method, user, SSH pass. If you want to know how to configure your connection into your particular L2, L3, go over to Ansible docs, click on the networking section and just read whether you're a Juniper shop or an Arista shop or a Cisco shop. They're going to have documentation about what works best uh, to get you into you know, your target system. Um, the point is each vendor is going to be just a little bit different. If you're concerned about, well, wait a second, a clear text here, username, passwords, Ansible Vault is the solution to that. That's an encrypted key store. Um, maybe we'll push a video out on that sometime soon. Don't have one yet, but if you're watching this video in the future, click around, it might be there. Uh, so that would explain, uh, or that's a quick rundown of our variables section here. It's explaining to Ansible the method of the connection, and you know how to identify itself once it makes that connection. Tasks are what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and count up tasks. Tasks are um, developed from at their, their core components called a module. So let's see, our first task is right here. It's everything I have highlighted. And the module is called EOS Facts. This is something you could Google on and probably get linked to uh, Ansible Docs page. File is the name of a module. Shell is the name of a module. Archive is the name of a module. What we're going to try to do is use this first module to go out and harvest information about a switch. So Arista realized, hey, you know what? Ansible programmers, they really like this setup module. They like that it goes out and it basically audits a target system and provides for them a bunch of variables they can use dynamically in their playbook, right? But we don't have Python on ours, so they can't do that. They've created their own module, just like other vendors have, that does the same thing. So I have that right up at the top. EOS Facts is their version of a gather facts. Go audit these switches. And this is a parameter specific to EOS facts. What do I want to gather? In this case, all. If you go read the documentation, it'll break down for you some of the other choices you might have in there. But suffice to say, it's going to pull down all of the config out of a switch, whatever switch it's connected to. Next, I have what would classically be thought of as maybe a server an admin, uh, uh, server admin side module, right? Um, administ server administrator might be really interested in this. In this case, this particular module just creates a directory, one like a Linux system. So I'm just saying, hey, I expect to have Arista config directory created. That's important because look at what my next 
module does, the shell module. Again, something we classically think of as like a server admin might be interested in. Echo, so echo in a shell. Ansible net config. Ansible net config was defined for me because of the EOS facts. That defined a bunch of variables for me. Um, gather subset, all right. This was a variable that maps to a whole bunch of configuration information. Um, and I'm trying to pipe all of it into the directory called Arista config and a file called AnsibleNet hostname. AnsibleNet hostname is a really neat variable Ansible lets its programmers work with. It just means whatever the name of the current system you're connected to. So I have two switches, switch one and switch two. That would be 10 and 20. So when it's connected to switch one, it's going to create a file, the host name switch one. It's going to create a switch one file. It's also going to create a switch two file, both of which will contain whatever Ansible net config is, which happens to be their running config. Uh, last, I'm going to run an archive module. Again, something we think of maybe a server admin being into. And it's going to say, go ahead and that file we just created, um, go ahead and archive it. And then we want to uh, remove um, that, that file. Uh, we want to remove the unarchived version. So just for kicks, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to edit this real quick. And we're going to change remove to false. And what we should end up with then is an archive and an unarchived version of our config. All right. So if we cat out one more time our playbook, there it is. I think all that's left to do is run it. I mean, um, we're going to see whether or not we produce some switch configs or not. Let's ls. You can see I don't have um, I don't have anything locally here other than hosts and net02. So uh, let's let it rip. Ansible playbook, and then the i flag is inventory. So the inventory is called hosts, and then the name of the playbook is net02.yaml. Let that run. So we can see that the Arista config saver, that was the name of my playbook, remember? The name of my play. Uh, fact collection worked. It looks like it created this directory. Uh, and it only had to do it. It's funny. It, it tried doing it twice because of two, I had two switches. So it tried to create a local directory twice. You only need to make it once, right? So that's why it said changed once and OK the second time. Uh, pulled this config out of the switches, archived it, and if we did this correctly, we should be able to list a file. Ah, I now have a directory called Arista config. Let's go ahead and go into Arista config. And there's my four files. I have the unarchived versions, and I have the archived versions here. So let's cat out SW1. Wow. There you go, there's the running config uh, from that switch, just like, there's his IP address, right? Just like if I cat out SW2, different IP address, different config. So very cool. I think I made the point that you could easily be a, a network um, person day to day and think, oh, I'm going to learn Ansible and just those, those network modules. Bad idea. You probably want to approach Ansible same way uh, uh, everybody else would. I'm going to start by just learning just. I'm going to learn about the Ansible server modules. And once I have a handle on the basics of how Ansible works, I'll add in this network thing. There you go. I hope you learned something, enjoyed this video. Again, hit the subscribe button. Alta3.com is your friend. We'd love to have you in our next training event.